today I'd like to show a little something here with dot matrix printers. Now, dot matrix printers were more common in the early years of computing around the 80s and 90s. They're not as common now in favor of inkjet printers and laser printers, especially based on the fact that inkjet printers can print color, and both sets of printers also have much higher print page per minute speeds versus dot matrix printers. But I figured I should show you this here and talk a little bit about how dot matrix printers work while I've still got this because I actually just sold this last Epson printer I got to somebody. But this is an Epson Action Printer 5000 Plus. And the way dot matrix printers worked, and I'm going to open the lid here. In fact, actually, I can just remove it. Camera down in there. Well, let's remain in the middle there. The way dot matrix printers work is there is a cartridge in here with an ink ribbon like this. Now, the cartridge I had for this is all busted up, so I just pulled the ribbon out of it to at least get it in there so I can at least show how the dot matrix printer works. But you had an ink cartridge in the form of a ribbon saturated with ink, and dot matrix printers always printed in black. You couldn't get any kind of color cartridges with a dot matrix printer because of the way that they work because the print head here is filled with pins and that's why it's called a dot matrix printer. The head moves along the ink ribbon and then what it does is it fires the pins from the ink uh, from the print head here through the ink ribbon onto the paper and that's what writes the image onto the paper usually in the form of text. And of course, it's dot matrix because it's making a matrix of dots on the paper, again, because of the pins. And most printers use a 24-pin print head, which is what is in this one here. And they use a communications ribbon cable to tell the print head here which pins to fire and, of course, when they fire. And the one thing about dot matrix printers is that, again, they're kind of slow. They don't have a good page per minute rating. The second thing is because of the print head operating the pins, they tend to be loud. Now this is it's supposed to be a quiet version, but it still generates plenty of noise. But I'm going to give a demo of how this dot matrix works. Turn the printer on. Now this Epson 5000 Plus has a couple of configurable options for back then because most of your programs and stuff were back in DOS and things like that and they didn't have exactly the font selection for what you wanted when you printed out a document so the font selection was built into the hardware of the printer. So this here lets me choose different things like courier and other types of fonts that I want to use. So if I want to print out a page with a particular font, I select it from here. I don't actually do that from the computer. I get it was the limitations of the software back then. This also has two trays, so I can select different trays, a couple of other features, and then of course some things there for loading the paper. And of course this has a front bin, but the paper primarily comes in from the back bin. It also comes out there. So what I'm going to do here while that lid is off, I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to run the printer's test mode. This will let you see how the printer works, also let you see how it prints on the paper, and also how loud it is. Now for those of you wearing headphones, you might want to be mindful about the noise that this printer generates. So just a heads up on that. Got the piece of paper. What I need to do is put the printer in test mode first, and then I got it hold this ribbon in place since I don't have the cartridge in there. Let me get it in test mode. Okay, now it's looking for a piece of paper. Uh, it in there. I'm going to have to feed it through a couple of times to get it started. Yeah, it got 
jammed in here. I said I'd take a minute here and show the repair job that I had to do on this printer after that test job I was trying to show there. Apparently the ribbon jammed up in the gearing system there. I had to pull it all apart and when I did I cut made the uh, chain or cable here come off the gear on the motor over here which was enclosed. So what I've done is managed to take the front panel off. It's sitting over there. Just had a cable there. I had to take the snaps out and then unscrew the top here to lift this up some. The screwdriver in there. And we can see the motor is in there with the cable, but it slipped off the gear there. So I had to get back in there and do that. And once I got it on there, I was able to come back on here. So all I got to do is put this little metal cover piece that I have right here back on that. And that will hold that whole assembly down. Let's get it lined up here. And this is just press fit into place. So it's down in there. Uh, here put the camera aside. And there it goes. So I just need to get the snaps. Snaps in there. And I put the camera aside to do the rest of it. And there we go, it's all back together. And it moves nice and smooth. All I gotta do is put this cover back on and we can finish up with the rest of the video. Alright, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if this repair job got that print head back working. There we go, back working again. So yeah, as I was saying in the previous video, that's pretty much how a dot matrix printer works. But I'm not going to try that again. But that's pretty much how dot matrix printers are.